Washington Times front page for Tuesday, August 31st, 2021. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. The final U.S. military planes have left Kabul, Afghanistan, ending the longest war in American history and capping a frantic two-week evacuation effort that is leaving hundreds of Americans stranded. Pentagon correspondent Ben Wolfgang reports the last aircraft took off from the Kabul airport just before 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time Monday, according to Pentagon officials. But they also admitted that Americans were still in Afghanistan as the final plane departed, with U.S. Central Command head General Kenneth McKenzie saying they numbered in the very low hundreds. In a written statement, President Biden praised the massive logistical undertaking that was the Kabul airlift, a historic achievement by any measure, but one marred by tragedy after 13 U.S. troops were killed and another 18 wounded by an ISIS-K terrorist attack last week. The U.S. ended the military mission after evacuating more than 116,000 people since August 14th. Stephen Dynan reports only a fraction, 6,000 to 7,000, were Americans. U.S. officials say they have plans to help those few hundred that were stranded. Of those Afghans brought to the United States, relatively few have been approved for special immigration visas or cleared as refugees. Most appear to have entered under the Department of Homeland Security's power of parole, special permission that is reserved for exceptional humanitarian cases. The formal conclusion to the war in Afghanistan ends a key chapter in U.S. history. The conflict claimed 2,461 American lives and left more than 20,000 American service members wounded. On Capitol Hill, frustration among progressive lawmakers has reached a fever pitch over the failure of Congress to keep in place a federal moratorium on evictions, despite knowing for months that the Supreme Court would toss out the ban. Carrie Murakami reports House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was unable to push a dozen moderate Democrats in her caucus to support an extension after the Supreme Court allowed a temporary extension on June 29th. The court ended the moratorium last week, setting off a panic among lawmakers who want the state to last another four months. In a letter to Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, 60 House Democrats expressed their displeasure with the outcome and vehement opposition to the court's ruling. Critics of the eviction ban say the job market has recovered since the end of COVID-19 shutdowns. The real problem for struggling renters, they say, is the slow distribution by the states of $46 billion in emergency rental aid that Congress authorized in a coronavirus relief bill. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. Don't have access to the Times yet? Visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George and get 25% off your annual subscription. On immigration, the Border Patrol is on pace this year to challenge 2005 as the worst year in memory for border deaths. Stephen Dynan reports through July, the Border Patrol has totaled 383 deaths at the border from all causes. That's more than the 253 recorded in all of 2020, or the 300 recorded in 2019. Migrants have died by drowning, died of exposure, or increasingly been killed in car wrecks by smugglers. A record 492 migrants died at the border in 2005. And finally, China has maintained its suspension of inter-country adoptions during the COVID-19 pandemic forcing Americans to either wait or take another path. Sen Wutan reports most intra-country adoptions in the United States are from China. American families last year finalized 202 Chinese adoptions. That's a 75% decline from fiscal year 2019, according to the State Department. Total intra-country adoptions dropped 45% overall, from 2,971 to 1,622 from fiscal year 2019 to 2020. According to the National Council for Adoption, China stopped pre-approving prospective parents earlier this year and has not resumed adoption travel. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And follow this podcast for free on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Just search Washington Times. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo.